ahead and do something we don't do often, but that is to have a special presentation on the De Anza Trail marketing plan. And so it's kind of a, a, a method of, to get this on the agenda is to put it on as a special presentation under other board matters. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and take that presentation that was requested by Supervisor Alejo, and I'll quickly turn, turn it over to Supervisor Alejo and see if he has some introductory comments for us. Yeah, thank you very much, um, Mr. Chair, and my, to all my colleagues. Um, as you know, in the budget, we had a conversation on one item about uh, promoting um, um, tourism and in, in the Salinas Valley, and so we had allocated $50,000 in the budget for this purpose. It was a certainly cut back from our previous allocation uh, because of the um, economic situation of our county, but uh, nonetheless, we, we have set aside 50000 for it. So today's presentation is, is, um, is for that purpose, to uh, hear what, what plans our um, California Visitor Center in Salinas uh, has um, for prom promoting the, the Salinas Valley and taking some direction um, uh, for some action at a, at a subsequent meeting um, um, to be able to utilize this money uh, during this current fiscal year. Um, so thank you very much, Mr. Appreciate it. Okay, with that, I believe we're turning to Mr. Craig Kaufman for the presentation. Thanks. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Supervisor Phillips and uh, the rest of the Board of Supervisors. Um, coming to you from our new California Welcome Center slash Heritage Cultural Center, uh, I'm actually standing in the oldest surviving commercial building in Salinas. It was built in 1872 and uh, started operation in 1873. And if we were to step back for a minute and think about how California began, uh, this room really tells an interesting story in that regard. It's the fifth largest economy in the world, and we have the most populous state in our nation. And again, that story and those, those seedlings or those roots can be traced back to this very building. So I'm very appreciative to uh, Salinas City Center and their land use program for recommending that we uh, moved the Welcome Center from our Davis location to this location uh, outside. There's a lot of construction going on, and we hope to have uh, our entranceway uh, secure so that we can start to take in a small amount of visitors at a time. Uh, we plan on having the roadways that we believe have been done will be done by October, and hopefully this whole project will wrap up uh, in November. I would like to share with you that uh, in this uh, uh, corner, we have a 7 foot by 11 foot high uh, first map of Salinas that was done in 1875. So there's a lot of interesting things that this room will tell, but more importantly, the ability to uh, bring uh, tourists in this. Uh, the peninsula has done a fantastic job over the 40 years of marketing and creating the brand, and it's, uh, it's time for uh, Salinas and the other parts of this region to uh, to join in that mix as well. So I'd like to um, I'd like to share with you, you know, the Board of Supervisors, after doing the research for this very building, uh, has played such an integral role through the years, especially during hardship times. Uh, uh, in 1914, World War I started, but in 1915, San Francisco was also holding the uh, Panama Pacific International Exposition. And uh, part of the demonstration was to, uh, they had come up with a variety of, Monterey County had come up with a variety of different uh, uh, postcards, because that was the way that people got to see things back then, the postcards. A lot of people didn't know cameras. And you know, this is uh, in regards to uh, wheat that was grown prior to uh, irrigation, uh, dry farming, uh, Monterey County was the uh, breadbasket of California. So a lot of the work that uh, Monterey County and Board of Supervisors in particular have done are actually being shown in this room. So uh, with that, I'm going to start my presentation and uh, uh, we'll go from there. Can everybody see the uh, first slide or the page? We can. Okay, great. So, as I said, in 1915, there was the Panama Pacific International Exposition. This piece was done around probably after World War II. Uh, and again, uh, the program here was basically about our history, our heritage. And in a lot of ways, uh, we need to look back in order to look forward. Uh, list of Board of Supervisors at that time are, are listed at the bottom of the 16-page brochure. Um, and obviously this was pre-aquarium and pre-convention uh, space, so it really did focus on our heritage and history of, of what this place has to offer. And this is a very interesting postcard. This postcard was put out in 1906, and what it does is it demonstrates Monterey, California, tourist attention. See Monterey? Why? 
for its historic lands marks of three nations scenery drives in the easiest modern hotel on the coast. Uh, the one on the, uh, 1906, that was the Monterey Hotel, and actually the very first hotel in California, even before the state became a the state of the union, was the Washington Hotel, and that was the first hotel in California uh, located in Monterey. I, I bring this up because it really does show some of the early uh, advertising that was done to really talk about the heritage tourism that we have to offer here in this area. So a national historic trail. Um, I wasn't too familiar with them. The ones that I learned in history was the Lewis and Clark expedition. And, uh, you know, uh, that, that was during uh, 1806, or 1803 to 1806. But there's actually a, a, an older trail that precedes that particular one. And that is the, uh, the Anza Trail. And the program that I'm calling is called the Valley of the Anza. It incorporates the San Juan Valley, Salinas Valley, and the San Antonio Valley. And just as the uh, Title uh, denotes regional economic development by leveraging historic sites to attract tourists to Inland Valley. So the Anza Expedition is a national historic trail, and the story is, is that uh, New Spain, which you can see on the upper right corner, you can see how much territory Spain was holding at the time, uh, a good three quarters of the United States as well. But during the 1775-1776 expedition, uh, there's 240 men, women, and children that traveled some 1,800 miles starting in Mexico, winding through Arizona, and then up through California, basically following uh, the water. And not only were there 240 men, women, and children, but they were also herding over a thousand head of cattle as well. So, basically, there is an international story that can be told here. And that is that uh, the expedition was basically the founding of San Francisco. So we have a direct connection through the, uh, through the, the trail. Uh, the map on the left demonstrates basically the trail that was, you know, starts down, like I said, in Mexico, winds its way through the Salinas Valley, uh, through uh, Gral and Tierra, right through uh, uh, to Monterey. They did do two important camps. They camped at uh, San Antonio, which at the time the mission was only three years old, and then the Carmel Mission. And then they uh, went through Toro Park up to San Juan Batista and then heading up to San Francisco. So in a lot of ways, our region is a time capsule from the standpoint of the 21 missions that we have in our area. Uh, uh, we hold five of them, and three of them are pretty much in their natural, natural setting. And so it's an opportunity for us to be able to take this uh, uh, trail and to develop it further to, for tourism as well. Juan Batista uh, De Anza is the gentleman that you see the bearded gentleman there. Uh, that's a pretty accurate uh, rendering of him, I believe. And uh, there were some various, uh, you know, Spanish and Mexican uh, contingency that made up this uh, expedition, along with the various first peoples or Native Americans that helped guide them uh, to to the area as well. What's funny is sometimes things are right in front of you, and as I started doing more research on this uh, historic trail, I noticed that more and more markers throughout uh, the area. Uh, the one on top is uh, obviously the one on John Street. Uh, the one on uh, the lower left-hand corner is uh, a main. And then, of course, uh, Highway 68, both east and west sides. Uh, you can see those historic markers as well. And the map, uh, again, shows how the trail goes right through the center of the community. So there's uh, some interesting opportunities there that we could be doing to market the story, not only uh, in Salinas throughout the valley, but also in San Diego County as well. So one of the things that we have is we have these two um, historic Park, the San Lorenzo Park, located down in King City, which has a, about a 200 acre site, and then also the uh, uh, San Benito Historical Park as well. And that has the ability to uh, potentially hold um, uh, tourists that come to this area. Obviously, uh, you know, overnight stay itineraries could be uh, uh, created with the existing infrastructure while existing thematic historic backgrounds. Uh, unique points of destination to strength that leverage an area with towns, trails, and rails. So the thought process 
here is that with these two county-owned properties, that we can start to create overnight itineraries through leveraging off of $4 billion worth of economic activity that happens on the peninsula. Between Monterey and Santa Cruz, we can start to draw uh, overnight stays through these one-day itineraries to these two, two uh, parks. Um, and like I said, they're, they're sort of mirror images of one another. San, San, uh, uh, Salinas Valley and San Juan Valley have so much in common as far as obviously agriculture being its mainstay as far as economic activity, but also just the history with, with these two parks. They both have historical buildings that have been moved onto the area. Uh, in San Lorenzo Park is actually on the actual trail, whereas uh, the San Benito Park is uh, a few miles away in uh, Tristina. So what do we do with these sites? Well, the proposal here is uh, tiny homes, uh, tent and TP glamping, uh, which the nice thing about this uh, is that it's a low impact infrastructure and investment versus uh, traditional uh, hospitality construction. And uh, this program that I came up with was prior to COVID, but it even fits in nicely from the standpoint that it's outdoors, obviously, um, but also because of it being mobile, it can be set up to accommodate social distancing protocols. Um, I think from the standpoint of what the Vista California is doing as far as studies are concerned, uh, we have a big uphill battle as far as getting Mercant back, that people are getting on planes, riding uh, transportation, and uh, staying in hotels. So this could be a nice opportunity for us to ease into something similar like this uh, that does address some of the challenges that COVID-19 presents. So how do you market a trail? Well, I propose that we do it through augmented reality. And those of you who are not familiar with augmented reality, it's the ability to take a scene uh, and superimpose it onto a live scene. Uh, there was a wine label company called 19 Primes where you can take your phone and actually the, the, uh, the label comes alive with the particular app. The same thing can be done to tell the story of how this expedition went through our area. Uh, uh, Juan Dianza and others uh, kept a detailed diary that can be recreated to uh, reenact these types of things so that you could do self-guided tours, uh, they could be done in multiple languages so that we are reaching an international audience. And really just the ability to sort of take our backdrops that are still relatively, uh, um, uh, haven't been developed, that uh, we can start to recreate these types of, uh, of uh, stories uh, that can be told throughout, throughout the area as well. Um, even selfies. So, uh, you know, selfies can be taken with a, a uh, you know, one hand that obviously has a crude uh, rendering, but they can be done so that people can take pictures uh, with uh, the trail behind it or with Juan de Anza. On a side note, when I was building out the uh, Welcome Center and doing it for Southern Pacific, I had already secured this ad, not really realizing the content. So we're not trying to reinvent the wheel here. This is something that uh, over about 100 years ago this ad came out and wanting to promote and uh, talk about the yesteryears of how California and the spirit of conquest and adventure was taken by the actual Anza Trail. Uh, this was done about five years ago by the Harvard Business School, and it basically demonstrates that the two areas that we're trying to uh, accomplish through the uh, Valley of Anza, that shows the biggest potential of growth is in accommodations related services and cultural and educational uh, entertainment. So really this program does touch upon those two uh, subclusters uh, that do have uh, the ability for uh, creating new jobs in, the, in, this, in this region as well. Mr. So, Kaufman, this is your five-minute warning, just letting you know. Okay, we're, we're, we're ahead of schedule. Um, so the Valleys of Amazon program incorporates uh, using underutilized assets within our region. It's the um, ability to, uh, to manage economic growth of tourism with these additional points of destination, a better circulation of tourists throughout the region. I, I know that we've uh, been uh, prior to uh, COVID breaking out, there was a lot of talk about over tourism in certain areas. And I think just by able to create these other points of destination, we can start to create some better uh, circulation throughout uh, the region as a whole, rather than just people coming to the peninsula and then leaving to go somewhere else. I think that there's a greater opportunity, uh, not only to talk about uh, the Anza Trail, but because we have the five missions, because a lot of our areas are not overdeveloped, uh, we can really sort of tell the story of how California began. And uh, if you also notice, too, that uh, 
you know, when we're creating these types of stories or these types of augmented reality, it's sort of like has sort of that Disneyland uh, thematic piece to it from the standpoint that a lot of Disney concept has come off of uh, basically telling stories that entertain, whether it's Mulan, which is just coming out now, or um, other types of movies, uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. This thing definitely falls within sort of that, that lane uh, to be able to tell the story. And if you stop and think about, too, if you were to go into Disneyland, what's the first entrance point into Disneyland? It's Main Street. And so a lot of these towns, uh, especially throughout the valley, uh, are still old towns that are still intact. And to be able to sort of tell their individual story as well would also be better uh, for our small old town. And of course, you know, the bottom line is we're trying to create new occupancy tax, POT. Um, obviously, the, uh, our two largest industries in this area is agriculture and hospitality. Um, and uh, I think hospitality could use the extra shot in the arm in regards to creating new TOT for this for this region as well. Uh, this is going to be a public-private partnership uh, proposed. I'm working with obviously uh, both the Pinnacle National Park and the superintendent of the trail, uh, the Anza Trail. Also engaged with CSUMB in uh, working on creating the business plan and marketing feasibility uh, plan as well. And we'll be reaching out to uh, Bureau of Land Management and to San Diego County uh, in regards to this project as well. And this California, uh, you know, obviously being aligned with California Welcome Center, if this does take off and does show some promise, uh, Visit California, I believe, will be jumping in as well because uh, marketing rural has always been a challenge uh, for them as well. And so the deliverable uh, will be the marketing plan, the feasibility study, and then also the business plan for not only the public uh, sector, but also the private sectors as well. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you very much, Mr. Kaufman. At this point, I'll see if there's any questions from the board. All right, we'll go to the public, see if there's any public comment on this presentation. When you talk about culture, it is not a Disneyland effect of the Trail of Tears. And who we are and where we come from, this doesn't represent the people of South County. It's not for tourism. The Trail of Tears, the indigenous, the Trekkies, the Oaxaca, we're going to have a welcome center. We need culture of humility. This is not a representation of your constituents. And who that we are and what we're dealing with to re-bring things forward like this. The Esalon and the Spanish conquistadors took the land of the people. This is cultural assimilation, and this is not monitoring county board of supervisors leadership. This should not go forward for all people who have been impacted. And this is for generations that aren't born. We walk on the footprints of our elders and we ride on the shoulders of our ancestors. If we do this, we're repeating history. If we fail to remember where we came from, we continue to remain doing the same thing. Thank you. Thank you, Pamela. We're going to go to Nick Muzmi next via Zoom. Mr. Muzmi, we're going to give you the ability to meet yourself and share a one minute public comment with this moment. Uh, thank you, Supervisor Lopez, and the, the whole board, and also the gentlemen um, who uh, had the presentation and followed this research together. I just want to echo Pamela's calls that, um, you know, I think we're in a, in a particular moment where we have to really look about the perspectives of history in which we tell. Um, these perspectives um, now told through, you know, colonizers, conquistadors, um, and the American settlers really um, reinforce. Um, ideologies of white supremacy and erase the uh, you know, just painful histories of our indigenous people um, uh, as well as um, you know uh, folks who came here before like uh, Mexicans and rancheros. So um, yeah, I think we should take an uh, example from Howard Zinn um, and tell the people's history of our county rather than the history um, of those who have conquered one and won through violence. Thank you. Thank you. Yesenia Molina. Hi. Um, yeah, I completely agree with the last two speakers. I actually wasn't even here to speak on this issue, so I'm glad I'm here and I was able to see this because I completely 
Uh, do, do believe that this is not the right way to do this. Um, I think that it is perpetuating, um, you know, this uh, white supremacy that we live in, and we should definitely not continue with this and promoting this side of history. You know, it's very one-sided. It's something that we get taught in schools, and then we get taught once we go to college that, that what we learned in elementary is actually completely wrong history. You know, we do not want to be uplifting um, this culture of colonization and stealing and, you know, robbing and rape, you know, you really understand what the missions were, you know? Um, that, that, that was not a, a great thing for indigenous folks, and I don't think that's something that we should be uplifting. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Lopez. And I just want to chime in on the conversation on the previous agenda item. I just wanted to say that uh, since the conquest of Mexico for uh, at 1519, uh, over 250 years by the time that uh, Padre Serra came to uh, Carmel. And during that time, the Catholic Church documented everything that was happening in Mexico and the New America and the uh, uh, in Mexico area. And they found out, they knew that the Anglo uh, uh, European came to this country and had a virus, and that virus. Uh, uh, was killing all the Native Americans, yet they came, they landed in Carmel, and they continued their genocide. And then to hear that the uh, 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 travelers, discoverers, that, that discovered California were coming up following the water is totally wrong. For over 10,000 years, my people here have been, have been uh, uh, living in California, and we had highways that were actually already put in place, but they were all trails. They didn't, they didn't have a paved highway, but they were following the trails. Well, thank you, Mr. Martinez. We're, we're really, American. we appreciate your public, uh, your public comment. Thank you. Thank you. Seeing no other hands, we close public comment and bring it back to the board. Um, any questions from board members? Okay. Supervisor Phillips? I just want to thank you for the presentation. It's very interesting. Thank you. Thank you, Phillips, and I want to thank Supervisor Leo for spearheading this. Um, if I could just really quickly, I mean, history is the good, the bad, and the ugly. It just needs to be told. And so for those comments that were made prior, I don't disagree. I just think it needs to be told. Uh, if we're going to start to uh, antiseptically remove things uh, without understanding how and why, there's no lessons to be learned moving forward. Uh, I would love to take the three uh, comments and make sure that we're telling that side of the story as well. I'm, I'm not pr promoting any kind of uh, uh, colonization. If it is, and if things and the natives and the first people were hurt by that, then we need to be telling that story as well. I, I think just by ignoring and not doing anything, uh, we're, we're causing greater damage if we don't tell the story. And, and that's the story that's being told in the third room, the good, the bad, and the ugly. We're going to talk about how the train you know, brought people and, and sent produce out, but those trains were also used to send the Japanese Americans to internment camps. So there's just not one size fits all. It really is something that has many layers to it, some good, some bad, and some ugly. And I think the whole story needs to be told so we're educating people not to repeat mistakes that were done in the past. So. Um, I'm sorry that this presentation offended some, but it's really in an in a, in a, uh, ability to really just tell the truth and tell the story. My background is in cultural anthropology, so I'm very acutely aware of the sensitivity of how uh, certain tribes or certain nations have overrun others, and I think that this is something that has an opportunity to tell all levels of the story uh, and making sure that everybody has an equal voice in telling the, the history of how California came to be. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kaufman. We're going to go to Supervisor Olegle next. Oh, I, I thank you, Mr. Kaufman, for your presentation. And I think that's about valid points and valid recognition that you made. Uh, just being more inclusive when we tell the, the story, um, I, I think that we can just amplify, um, you know, the different points of view of history when we tell this story. Obviously, there's so much rich history in Monterey County, and I'm a big local history fan. And you study all facets of it. Um, the good, as you said, the good, bad, and the ugly. And, and certainly in Monterey County, being the first capital of California under Spain and under Mexico, um, th there's also a lot of tragedy in that story. But today we still celebrate and, and, and we study and we learn 
and we appreciate you know the fact that Monterey County was not in the capital, but the first public school started in the city of Monterey, the first newspaper, the oldest government building, the custom house, is still standing today, uh, an old adobe building just off the Monterey Wharf. I mean, these are all things that people sh should know, and I certainly incorporated into my internship programs and my young supervisors programs um, to, to learn it, but I think there is a lot of history to learn and celebrate, and a lot of the, 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 um, the early history of, uh, of this state starts right here in Monterey County, and, um, and you know, we shouldn't be uh, uh, um, shy to tell and teach our younger generations that rich history, but also be frank and trying to provide a balanced view from different perspectives. I think that's the right approach of, of doing it, and, and certainly the, the, that that inclusion of different points of view, I think, even makes the debate or the, the storytelling even more interesting. Um, and it's, uh, so, I, so I, I hear the valid, the valid points, but I think there's a way to do this that is right, that is inclusive, and that, that could bring in those other perspectives as well. Um, but certainly, to be able to um, um, tap into a rich history in Monterey uh, that is often not told. Um, and nobody can tell our story unless we tell it. And I think there's a way, way to tell our story in the right way, but also a, a trip back um, um, visitors to learn it. Um, uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, fans of learning um, California history, but there's, I think there is no better place to, to tell California story than, than telling the story of Monterey County. Um, and so, so I, with that, I, I, I would just say um, this, this is a work in progress, and there's a way to just amplify it a little more. Um, but, uh, but the question I have would be just for staff at a later point about when does this come to the board to decide uh, and just make that allocation. We set aside that funding, um, but, we, but we yet heard anything as of June, um, and I know the, the year's ticking there, um, but uh, certainly I, just, uh, I was hoping today would have been just some action as well, but if that's come at a subsequent meeting, uh, let's, um, let's make that available uh, so, let's, so that my colleagues could uh, Learn more, um, ask more questions, but have it come back at, a, at a, um, another meeting soon just to be able to make that, that uh, uh, allocation. Thank, thank, you. thank you, Supervisor. And, oh, one thing, Mr. Chair, just uh, I, one, one more thing. Um, I, I would just say that you get a thousand for promotion of tourism in the Salinas Valley. Uh, certainly, at some point, we should see how that funding was used. I, I didn't see much. I know, I know that year we designated for CBB to um, 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 manage, but I, I, just, I just haven't seen much about what came out of that previous year's funding for um, tourism promotion in the Zone of the Valley. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Lehoe. We're going to go to Supervisor Parker next. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. And I just want to express my appreciation to the public speakers. Um, and uh, also to Mr. Kaufman for his um, wrap-up comments. I think it, you know, it wasn't clear from the presentation that a uh, fuller uh, version of history was going to be told, and so I think now it's clear that that's something that we're very interested in, and um, so just want to say thank you to uh, the public for paying attention and weighing in, um, and um, yeah, thanks. Supervisor Phillips. Yeah, the comments uh, reminded me of the quote from Winston Churchill, uh, a nation that forgets its past has no future. And I think uh, 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 it, it is good that we look back on history, uh, however it was, and, uh, and, and uh, encourage looking at that. So thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kaufman, for the presentation. So with that, it was not an action item.